I'm working on the red A toe. I'm focusing on the halimanaceae part. The blades and whatnot is the main part that I'm focusing on. Natalia has already did a lot of that and I'm just kind of going ahead and finishing up the rest of the data. These are all halomania. They're important for the tree of life and we're sequencing them to tell the difference between each one of them. For morphological purposes, we preserve them in formulin and when we're ready to do extraction, we have them in silica. I'm at the UV crosslinker. I'm taking out the mortar and the pester. And what it, pesto, and what it does is it crosslinks the DNA so that nothing can be contaminated. Okay, I'm taking out one of the samples. I'm gonna look at it under the microscope and make sure that it's clean and no epiphytes are growing on it. Okay, we're gonna start the extraction now. I'm gonna put the sample in the mortar. We're gonna put a little bit of sand in it. It's Edgar. Okay. Ed. To break up the tissue. E D. And then we're gonna grind it up. And just continue to break it down until it's like a white pasty look. You can see all the tissue is breaking down. Okay, all the tissue is broken down now, so you're gonna scrape it with the spatula. And once you have it all, you can go ahead and pour it into here. Pour it in slowly. This is all the tissue broken down. We will use the DNA Easy Plant Mini Kit in order to do the extraction. These are the different buffers that we will use and also the RNA. And we also have one of the buffers already in the water bag. First, we will add 400 microliters of the buffer AP1. Changing the tip. Okay, now we'll add four microliters of the RNAs. Setting the pipette to four microliters. Okay. This is the RNAs A. Okay. Okay, now we'll vortex them. We'll put them here and now we'll place them in the incubator for 10 minutes, mixing them about every three minutes. While my samples are incubating in the water bath for 10 minutes, I'll go ahead and prepare some ice for the next step. Our vortex and then I'll place them back in the incubator for the rest of the 10 minutes. It's been in the water bath for 10 minutes now. I'm going to take it out, mix it up, do the vortex. Now I'm going to go ahead and add 130 microliters of the buffer AP2. Go ahead and set the pipe to 130 microliters. Adding the AP2 buffer. Mm -hmm. Now that it's added, I'm going to go ahead and close them up and place them on ice for five minutes. Okay, it's been on the ice for five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the centrifuge on. Place them in the centrifuge, making sure they're balanced. Cover it up. And I'm gonna centrifuge it for five minutes at max speed. I'm taking the liquid, not touching the pellet, and I'm gonna transfer it to the lysate column. You can see the pellet at the bottom. You want to leave that in. This is done centrifuging for five minutes at max speed. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Transfer the liquid, not touching the pellet. Take 
day when I'm done with that. Close them up and then go ahead and place them back into the centrifuge for two minutes at max speed. I'm taking it out of the centrifuge now. It's done centrifuging for two minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the flow through with out degree. Into this tube. And after I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and add 600 microliters of the buffer AP3, which equals 1.5 of the volume. going to go ahead and put it in here but kind of mix it a little bit by pipetting it and just repeat this step for the next sample. Okay I'll take the extraction solution now. I'll add 650 microliters into the white column and the DNA is binding to the white column. Mm -hmm. And I'll do it again for the second sample. And then we'll place the two samples into the centrifuge. And we'll centrifuge them for one minute at 8,000 RPM. And then we'll go ahead and repeat this whole process over again by adding the rest of the 650 into the white column. And then we'll go ahead and we'll centrifuge it again. And when we take it out of the centrifuge, we will discard the collection tube, all the flow through that's in it, we'll go ahead and we'll discard it. Okay, we already discarded the flow through and now we're just placing it into the collection tube. Once I've placed it in the collection tube, I'll add 500 of the buffer AW and it's just a wash. We'll close it. Place it back in the centrifuge for two minutes at max speed. Okay, it's done centrifuging. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. Place the columns into a new tube. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the buffer out of the preheated water bath. I'm gonna take 100 microliters of this and I'm gonna place it into each tube. And after I put 100 microliters into each one of them, it's going to incubate at room temperature for five minutes. So now I'll just let it incubate for five minutes. Okay, it's incubated for five minutes. We're going to go ahead and resuspend the DNA by placing it in the centrifuge for one minute at 8,000 RPM. And then we're going to repeat the whole process of washing it again, but we're going to do it with 50 microliters of the preheated buffer. We've completed the last step now. I'm going to go ahead and take them out of the centrifuge. You can go ahead and take the column out of each one of them and just close it. And now this is the very last step. I can go ahead and check for the DNA quality in agarose gel. But for now, I'm going to just place them in the freezer.